All right, well, this looks like the spot, I reckon. Fantastic. This will do it. This is where I'm going to set up camp. Now, I'm back down the river. G'day, Richard Musgrave Evans here, and welcome back. I'm back down the river, and I've got a fantastic spot. I'm going to be here a few days, so it should be good. What I'm going to do is set up a major base camp, great artist camp, whole lean-to canvas, the roll-out bedding underneath, get it all set up perfect, because I'm going to be here for quite a few days. Now, as far as this location, what we've got here is uh, a beautiful river system, which comes through and also chooks around back behind there and out that way. And just off, off to the side here is a little river, a little, sorry, a little island. So you've got an island, headland, river chuffing around, all sorts of action. Cannot wait. It's going to be fantastic weather. The whole thing should be great. Right, let's get started. Got a fair bit of canvas to work with here, so it should be quite a big, a big base camp. Should be good fun. Close on it now. Look at that. Right. Right, well, here we are, all set up, beautiful campsite, absolutely the best. So what I'm going to do is I've decided, I've been checking the composition, I've got a fantastic composition, I've been checking it out right now because I know tomorrow is going to be exactly the same weather. So I've worked out the composition, I'm going to paint a really big painting and of course when you're going to paint that big, it's always best to know what you're going to do before you do it. So the composition's composed in my head and the subject set cannot wait. First things first though, get a bit more firewood for tonight. It's going to be a frosty night, so I've got a bit of wood there. Might grab a little bit more and I might have one more cuppa. No worries. You can never have too many of them. That fire's looking good. Beautiful bird life around here. Really nice bird life.
Well, we just finished that painting. Absolutely freezing morning, minus one. That's cold here for Australia anyway. Not used to it when you get the heat of the outback. 40 whatever degrees Celsius. This time of year though, it's beautiful on the river. You get nice sunny days. So this is almost winter. Nice sunny days, freezing cold nights and mornings. But that's not too bad because it only lasts a little bit. As soon as you get up, she warms up pretty quick. And also, because of that coldness, you get that beautiful mist on the water. So I've done a few fleeting moment paintings while I'm here, rather than just the big major landscapes. Just doing those little gems, those little fleeting, colourful, spontaneous... Oh, what would you call them? Just capturing that essence of that time of day, that special light, that magic moment that only lasts a few seconds and then it's changed to something else. But anyway, it's going to be another nice day by the look of it. Beautiful stuff.
Ah, beautiful. Good cup of tea. Well, I've got to say, this is what I needed. I needed to get out in the bush and play near paint. It's been great, just to kick back for a few days, get some good quality paintings done, and just unwind, basically. I'll just give that, give that lunch a little bit longer, and uh, then I'll have a bit of a taste. Cannot wait, actually. Should be pretty good. It's got a few yummy bits in there, so... So it should be good. Right, I'm hanging for this stuff, I can tell you what. Bring her around here. All right. Well, here we are on the river. Just finished the painting. Really happy with it. Today's all of a sudden gone kind of overcast, but I actually used it to my advantage. So there's some beautiful, subtle colours in the uh, in the sky. So I just painted a little one and just. Didn't try to show off or anything, just painted a nice little piece how it is. Just beautiful, subtle, soft reflections because there's no wind. And so the soft reflections of the keynote really contrasting against some of the chunkier marks. But beautiful subdued tones and yeah, I'm really happy with the way it came out. So I'll just go for a bit of a paddle down here. Paddle just hit the bottom. Yeah, it's pretty nice out here, I'll tell you what. Really enjoying this getting out and playing here painting again. All right, well, here we are. We're all set up, ready to go. Got a massive canvas. Now this is a white, it's prime, got three white undercoat primers, but it's actually a Belgian linen. So if you look on the sides, I'll show you later on, we've got the raw color. It's primed with a clear seal on the side, so you can still see that it's the Belgian linen. But today I've decided to go for a white primer on the front. But Belgian linen is about as good quality as you can get, so got the good gear. Now, pretty excited about the subject. I've got my setup that we saw me put up, the artist camp. <laughs> Fantastic. Got everything there ready to go, all composed, waiting for the right time of day. Hang on, I'll just shut this one. So we've got a bit more of a view. Waiting for the right time of the day, which is now, to get into it. Okay, now what I've done is I've just quickly drawn some in while the light was uh, not quite right, but I just wanted to get that composition right because it's absolutely important to get everything in the right spot even though it looks like it's rough and fast it is rough and fast but i've put the key elements in their right positions so now when i work broadly everything will be balanced hopefully 
All right, now we're pretty much ready to go. So what I'll do is grab a bit of paper towel and clean that white off because I'm going to put the darkest darks in next. Right, let's just have a look what we got. We'll go for some alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. Ultramarine blue, that'll get us straight off to some really good darks. Now, what have we got here? This is obviously going to be one of the keynote areas of the darkness. Just on the edge of that tent there. So I'll pull a bit of that in. Some of that in. All right, more burnt sienna, alizarin, crimson, ultramarine blue. Just going to work out what's going on. That can be some dark stuff there. That's the firewood pile. So we'll just put suggested shadow tones of that. That can be the fire there. The boat. That's the canoe. Sticking some of the dark tones into that. Just feeling it. Right. Now, just knock up a bit more dark. Just feeling the composition at the moment. Stand back and see how it's going. Well, that's not too bad. Now, I'll just introduce a little bit of this white into this mix. Ultramarine blue, bit of... What is that? Oh, hang on, let's have a little compose. Right, so we've got the ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. It's kind of more of a purple colour. I just go a bit more blue in that. A little bit more ultramarine blue. Just trying to work out. Those birds are having a nice old sing. Just going to put a few of the darkest darks in on the other side here. And I'm sticking them in. I like the work, as you know. Put the darks in first, and then uh, we can put the lights in over the top of that. Just I will obviously put a lot more light back over the top of that, but I'm just putting some shadows in now. I think they need to be. Oh, what fun to be back out in the bush painting. I might throw a bit of Viridian Green with that mix. Viridian Green and a bit of magenta here. Half mix the two together. Get your nice dark colour. Just add a bit of white to that mix. Kind of a shadowed foliage colour if you like. So I'm just putting some of that in. And like I was saying, I will add the, the light tones on top. I'm just getting some of this dark in now. So, seems to be a good way to work. What have we got here? Well, we've got some paint on the... that doing? Right. Let's stick that in there. Bit of a dark there. Just a little bit here and there. Now what's going on with these trees? Let's have a look at this. That main tree, that one can live there. can be here. Somewhere in that line. Somewhere in that line. I'll just stand back and have a look at that. Oh, 
all well and good. So now, let's get a bit more of that ultramarine blue and white mix. Throw a little bit of red in. Just putting the real distant shadows in there. Those trees off in the out in the middle of nowhere out there. Let's have a look at that. Alright. Just going introducing a little bit more dark in here. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Just going to introduce a bit more of those shadow tones first and then we'll get stuck into some of the light source. Let's put that in. Right, now, chunk of white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Ultramarine blue, we'll use that blue there to knock it down. Trying to get a darker tone and a bit more paint going too. I'm getting through that paint very quickly already, I can see that. Just want to paint. Let's go a bit darker than that. Can get more of that burnt sienna out. This is quite a coarse linen. And because of that, it's going to chew up a lot of paint. Pellet knife is good for trailing it on. I've decided, I was looking at this composition yesterday and this area on the side of the painting was in shadow, it's going to move around to that and I like that so what I'm doing now as I'm working with that, I'm putting this foreground into a deeper shadow. A subdued colour, so what I've done is the burnt siennas in blue to knock it back, make it a little bit greyer, less chromatic saturation. Just introduced a bit of white which lightened it. So it's an earthy colour. But at the same time, even though it's an earthy colour, it's quite a dark tone of it, so Nowhere near as light as the lightest tones will be. And they will come all in good time. Just chunk it on, that's it, chunk it on. What are we working with here? Plenty to do, plenty of paint to go on. All good fun. All a good workout. What do we got here? Get that paint on, get that paint on. Get the coverage. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white, ultramarine blue. Half oh, mix it while it's on there. <laughs> a bit more blue with the mix. Get that foreground completely covered. Just getting it nice around the edges. Those birds sound fantastic. Getting good. I'm going to stand back and have a look. Alright, well that's, that's going along alright. So, let's just get the water in. Get some water in. Viridian green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a bit of white. Just move that palette knife over here out of the way. More yellow ochre, 
more burnt sienna, so there's less of the green. A bit more white to frost it off a little. That's what colours the water today. Yeah, it's got a lot of yellow ochre. Every day is different. Let's have a look at that. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson. Not too far off the mark. Don't <laughs> worry, right, keep on going. Let's get that paint in. Plenty of paint. Look at that, look at that. With the water, it's good to finish. Right, we'll just put this in first. With the water, it's always good to finish with downward marks or cross marks. So with the other marks, like here, you do all different random ways, but to get the reflections of the water, it feels good to finish off with a downward mark like this, or a crosswood mark like that. Now let's just have a look what we got here. Stand back. Right, well that's going all right, but uh, got to keep on going. Burn see any yellow ochre again, just mix it up a little bit more. Let's get some over here. The coverage, more yellow ochre in the mix. Get the paint on. What are we doing here? Yep. Now just lighten a little bit and a bit more burnt sienna. Just a little bit different back here. Aha. A little bit more blue in the mix. As it goes back, the reflection is just a little bit different, so it's got a little bit more ultramarine blue. That tree's going to be there, just working out where the tree's going to be. I might have a bit one here. If that's the case, a little bit of a reflection there from it. Alright, let's have a look. All sort of come together. A bit of blue there, a bit of white. Just gonna mix some blue in there. Half mix it into all this stuff. It's a bit of a reflection. Like so. that water. Cleaner colour, blue and white. Just 
looking up and down to see where the trees are going to be and where they're not going to be. A bit of blue there. See if I got those right. Tone of that grey burnt sienna, right? White burnt sienna, yellow ochre, mixing up a bit of a neutral wet sand colour. Get some of that blue in it to grey it off. Here's some of that sky blue, grey the dirt off. What have I got here? Let's have a look. It's more of a burnt sienna, so it stands out different to the colour of the water. That's it. Let's put that wet sand in. Getting all that wet sand in. Oh, let's just have a look at that. All right, well, it's all been about shadows so far. Let's get some of that light source happening itself. So I'm going to go for white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Plenty of white, keep it a light tone. And yellow ochre. Let's have a look. in keep mixing keep mixing that's going to go right across to there I reckon and then shoot down The coverage. So we're just getting a basic colour. I'll start to do a bit more form later on. Now hang on a sec, I'm out of yellow ochre. It's got the cartridge gun for this one, fantastic stuff. Okay, going. All right. Yeah, what are we going to do? All right. Let's keep on going white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Stick those light tones in. Let's 
mix it around. A bit more yellow ochre in the works. Get plenty of paint on, plenty of blending. All different marks. Right. And that shadow's creeping a bit over here, which is it's going to be bluer, so. Just going to knock in. So what do we got here? Let's have a look. Here's that. Go up to there. There's a nice shadow. Gonna throw a bit of variety in here of light and shadow. It's got to get a coverage first, more than anything. Now the water's edge. We have their yellow oak here. Yep, yellow oak will do that. Get this one covered. Have a look at that. Not too bad at all. All right, so now. Let's get that distant bank in the one on the other side, yellow ochre and white, but in Sienna. Light, light, light tone. Stick bits and pieces in. A bit more yellow ochre in the mix. as we go. Yellow ochre, green, it's a little bit greener on the water's edge, like there's a bit of a green algae growing or something. What do we got there? It's all went on good. Just got to get these lines correct. What do we got? Pull that down. Pull that down. Pull that down. Just establishing the uh, water's edge where I want it. He's going to paint a keyed down version of all that. Let's have a look. Slightly less colour. Now I might actually lose the edge of that tent, but that's all right. Let's just get rid of that for now. Just so we can get some of this reflection in. Sometimes you do one step back to do some steps forwards. Pretty and green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and knock a bit of foliage colour on the other side there. The light source. I'm just lightly touching, just very lightly touching, letting the shadows, because I've already got the shadow tone under it. Just letting that shadow tone shine through. 
varying tone now. I'll go for some more magenta and blues. All of those grey green type colours. Plenty to do in this work, I tell you what, plenty to do. Just put a little bit more magenta in that mix there. Those trees just have a little bit more of that in it. Okay. Now, just going to mix up a bit of ultramarine blue and magenta over here separate. That makes a light blue colour. Light magenta blue. I'll just half mix it into that other stuff. Let's just grade that off that little bit. Send it back that little bit for the distance. Very lightly touching. Drawing those distant gum trees in. Alright. Alright, so now get this. Just going to lightly pull through. of a wobble for the ripples and whatever else. Right. Right now, just that wet, transparent water where there's a, you can just see through the bottom just here, a slightly lighter tone. What have we got? Yeah, slightly lighter tone, so I'll stick that in. Just take it up. Yep. That's right, yeah. Yellow ochre. Yep. Dip more of the water in here. Now we're getting there, it's starting to take form. Starting to see a few things. Now I'll just, I'll just get a bit of paper towel again. You can see what's going on in there. Alright, now. Clean towel. Just gonna pull through and wipe. I just want to soften where that foliage meets the sky. So I just pull through. It just helps blend the two together so they don't just look at each other. So it's just with a knife, whichever way, and just lightly pull through as much as you feel like you need to. Varying the marks, different ways. Pulling through. Right. Do the same over here. Blend those skies together a little bit more, more first. I've got all the different colours there, but I haven't actually blended them that much yet, so just a few little marks to bring them all so they're convincing. A 
What have we got there? That trunk. The trunk goes there. That'll go there. It's filling in those negative spaces. Stand back and have a look. Always good to get back when you're doing all this stuff so you don't overwork it. You want it to be obviously as fresh and spontaneous as possible. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of paint off with the underside of the knife. Some very light blue. some horizontal marks to give the feeling. A little bit of wind or something licking on the water. Pull through. Magentas and yellow ochres. Blue. a light greenish colour but greyed off for some of the foliage that's just a little bit further back but still on that hill there. There's also a bit of that magenta red colour in some of that foliage so I'll just half mix a bit of that in. Maybe even slightly red with a bit more lism. It's just a just a slight feeling of red there and that's very good to put if you can see a bit of red in the landscape it's good to put it in because it's the opposite side of a lot of the green that's in the picture because it's on the opposite side of the colour wheel it'll really help alright, let's have a look at that Alright, getting there now, there's a bit of a shadow creeping in over here. Just creeping on this sand here, I'm liking that, so I'm just going to add some in. Just gives that beautiful feeling of those creeping shadows. Might go to a slightly smaller knife. Okay, so I've got the blue. Just drawing a bit more of that shadow work in. Knife on the edge. A little bit of work on that canoe. Alright. Alright. Things are getting there, getting there. A little bit of blue here and there. Just to pick out the edge of the uh, where the water is. Getting there, getting
Picked up a light tone here, smoky sort of tone. Just uh, thought I'd stop talking for a minute, let you enjoy the scene without <laughs> all the gas bagging, but you couldn't stop me that long and back into it. Just going to draw a few things in here. We'll just take a bit of paint off there. Adding bits and pieces. Right. Just keep on mixing. I've got some cad whites, sorry, cad yellows and oranges. Half mixed. Just adding little bits here and there to really start to bring it together. It needs that finishing. It needs some real refinement. What else we got here? What else do we have?
just uh, keep on moving around. There's always plenty to do if you want to have a look around and do it. pink in some of those trunks, so I'll put that in. Such a beautiful colour in some of those trunks. Be crazy not to throw that in considering it's there. these highlights again. Just keep on keeping on. Yeah, yeah. Keep working around. Just keep adding little bits and pieces here and there because it's all about feel now. Just building up slowly. Gradually, once you've got the major, the major thing in. All right. All right, well, there's a lot in now, I reckon that'll probably do. I mean, obviously I can keep on going forever, but I don't reckon I will because I've got the big impression and I don't want to wreck it. Now, as you can see, the shadows have now crept up the side there. I anticipated that and started to put them in because I saw it yesterday and they're starting to creep over and that's perfect. Also on this far bank, we're starting to get the shadows on that side and in the foreground they're coming across. That's a great lead in uh, tonally in the lower keys up to the bright highlights of this area. Then we've got the canoe, nice little touches there, and uh, yeah, you know, pretty happy with what's going on. I like the way the uh, distance receded. These are keyed down and cool the blues and whatever. Uh, the water's nice and calm. Put a few of the branches in. It's holding the, the tarp up. Pretty much I feel like I've got what I wanted, so what we'll do is we'll get that camera off. We'll have a closer look, see what you guys think. All right.